apparently this woman had been seen by another another witness who was in Nantahala. Um, they had spotted a dog man. They did not notice this woman in her car. And as they were like trying to figure out what they were looking at is when they noticed a woman in a car with a camera taking pictures. This will all add up rather quickly when we get into the whole crazy cover-up. Um, I just wanted to share with you really quick. <clears throat> we'll get back into this is all I'm not going off subject. This is all involving this case. This is uh, the email from Jody's brother. What is going on here? There's a community called Natahela, and in that area is a man-made lake that feeds the local powerhouse. Well, the land around the lake has been sold, and they've been building a road that runs around the lake, and they are building a multi-million dollar home in one section. The man, and maybe some woman, who are building the house are about to quit. They are even carrying sidearms and have rifles and shotguns at hand all of the time. They tell people that they have seen 15 dogmen and they said every one of them are huge. Some stand at least 8 to 10 feet tall, with one standing nearly 15 feet tall. I would say that's the alpha. They say he has a mane like a lion. Color being like a dark blonde. They said when they run, they have a jump in their step like a kangaroo. Their hands look like bear claws and the rest of their body is brown in color. They said something about their feet and something else, but I had forgotten what it was. I'll find out and let you know. The strange thing is, is they have not attacked anyone. You and I both know when things like this are seen, there is talk, and from one tale brings a bigger one. However, the source I spoke with is firm, and he said some of the folks working there have been checking into Dogman. They may have even heard of your show. What he said was they think these are soldier Dogman, and from the way they look and act, it's like they have DNA of several different creatures. I hope to learn more on this. I'll let you know what we find out. So, like I said, I had been holding on to that email for three years, which would bring that email's date to 2019. Small communities, people notice things. Small communities, people notice outsiders. Correct? Yes, they do. Now, you may be asking, well, what about the woman that you were just talking about? Well, I just wanted to share that bit of information with you because why was there an FBI forensic photographer in Natahela when there are massive dogmen reported? in that area and then they cover up a death this is where the cover-up begins my friends right here one year later still no answers October 8th 2020 one year later still no answers October 8th 2020 the FBI now conducting investigation on forensic photographers drowning Kathleen Polis Miller was just 60 when she drowned in less than two feet of water in Graham County on October 7th, 2019. Kathleen Polis Miller was 60. Her body was found in less than two feet of water. Big Santitla. Even though a year had passed, there is still few answers available on the drowning death of Federal Bureau of Investigation forensic photographer in Graham County. Authorities deemed the death of 60-year-old Kathleen Polis Miller suspicious one week after she was discovered face down in Big Santitla Creek on October 7, 2019 by her husband, Greg Miller. He was the last person to see Kathleen alive. 
the FBI under pressure by Kathleen's co-workers, finally assigned an agent to help investigate the circumstances surrounding Kathleen's demise in November of 2019. Through multiple interviews with various agencies, Greg Miller has continually made conflicting statements about what transpired. However, that's where the latest information ends for Graham County Sheriff Jerry Crisp, a captain on the force at the time of Kathleen's death. death. Crisp headed up the local portion of the investigation. Initially, they, the FBI, just jumped in with both feet, Crisp said. They wanted copies of everything I'd had, which I gave them. They started doing interviews, and I asked for copies of the interviews they did with him in Alabama. I was told they would get them right to me, but to this day I have not seen them. Crisp also has not received a final autopsy. He still believes enough information has been gathered to press charges. If I can take everything I've got, plus everything they've got, put it all together, go meet with my district attorney, I think I've got enough for charges, Chris Bad. Greg Miller told authorities he returned from a five-minute trip to the restroom near the campsite to find his wife in the creek, which measured less than 22 inches in depth at the site of the drowning, according to preliminary autopsy. He then ran to flag down a motorist who called for an emergency personnel at 5.17 p.m. She was later pronounced dead at the scene initially. The Graham County Sheriff's Office, North Carolina, the State of Bureau of Investigation, U.S. Forest Service, and District Attorney's Office collaborated on the investigation. The Millers lived in Huntsville, Alabama. After Kathleen's death, neighbors of the couple later received what proved to be fictitious notices from the Huntsville Police Department asking for tips on Kathleen's death. Two years go by. November 10th, 2021. Madison County, Alabama. More questions than answers remain two years after an FBI photographer from Madison County died while on vacation with her husband in North Carolina. The investigation into Kathleen Miller's death continues with few details being released from law enforcement, but her family is continuing to push for justice. Kathleen Miller and her husband Greg took a trip together to the Nantahila National Forest in North Carolina, but only Greg walked out alive. Kathleen drowned in two foot of water. It's a story her sister, Vaughn Grace, struggles to understand. It doesn't make sense that with all the experience Kathy had with water and water safety, she fell face first into two feet of water and not be able to get herself up, Vaughn Grace said. He has changed the story that he has told repeatedly. She added about Kathleen's husband. Kathleen's family aren't the only ones who have noticed that. Her autopsy results were also released in 2021. James Hyde, Graham County Medical Examiner, noted in the document, with inconsistencies in the accounts surrounding the deceased's death and autopsy findings and the depth of water in which the deceased drowned in the manner of death is best classified as a homicide. Another report observed what were called abnormal bruising on her neck, scrapes on her face, a recent court filing points to Kathleen's death certificate, which also lists her manner of death as a homicide. What happened in that shallow creek spawned a multi-agency investigation with Graham County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, and other authorities. But still, two years later, no suspects have been named and no charges filed. Instead, a spokesperson for the FBI in North Carolina says the investigation is ongoing and they would won't provide any details to the News 19. Once the investigation is completed, the FBI says the findings will be turned over to the United States Attorney's Office in the Western District of North Carolina. It's difficult for the entire family, but I would rather have them than to go in not fully prepared. It's not like the time is going to bring Kathy back, Grace said. But Kathleen Miller's family isn't waiting for justice. 
a wrongful death lawsuit has been filed in Madison County, Alabama, alleging Greg Miller intentionally and feloniously killed her. They are suing to limit Greg's financial gain from bank accounts, life insurance policies, and their home. Mark McDaniel, a prominent Huntsville attorney who is not involved in the Miller case, says Alabama's Slayer statute is designed to prevent a person who killed someone from benefiting financially, but Greg Miller hasn't been charged with a crime. McDaniel says depending on the evidence, he could still be found guilty in a civil lawsuit. You can be found not guilty. You could even be not charged in a criminal case and be sued for wrongful death in a civil action because the burden of proof is less, McDaniel said. Meanwhile, Kathleen's family says they have no idea where Greg Miller is. The home of Kathleen, owned in Owens Crossroads, sits empty, neighbors tell News 19, and they don't recall seeing Greg Miller in more than one year. He has abandoned my sister's home, Gray said. Documents show Greg has survivorship rights to the home in the wake of Kathleen's death, but her family says Greg is not paying the bills. A red tag on the home's meter shows utilities have been turned off due to non-payment. Kathleen's sister is dealing with the HOA, and that's not all. I went ahead and paid the mortgage to keep the house from going into foreclosure, Grace said. It's been two years since Kathleen died. The investigation of her death is in limbo. Her family is still counting on law enforcement, but one way or another, Kathleen's family is determined to see the price paid for her death. Again, Kathleen Miller was an FBI photographer in Huntsville. The FBI here has referred our questions about her death to the FBI's office in Charlotte. That office told News 19 they don't know how much longer the investigation will take or when it might be handed over to the United States Attorney's Office. Let's talk cover-up. This is what I think happened. And I've kind of ran it over a couple people. I bounced it off some people. That's what I do. Um, This is just a theory. Uh, You know, I'm, I'm not saying anything's etched in stone. I did bounce it off three people, three people who had no idea about this incident. I shared what I just shared with you guys. Then I shared my theory. Here it goes. Here's where the cover-up starts, kind of, according to newspapers. Now, we're just going to step aside from the initial attack and go back, or death, excuse me. 2020, Graham County Sheriff's Captain Jerry Crisp asked for copies of interviews and final autopsy. FBI is silent. Sounds like they're hiding something. Okay. One year, still no arrest. That's a bit strange, I'd say. Then, fake notices from Huntsville Police Department asking for help are passed around the neighborhood. That is very strange. And I think, I think my friends, the FBI, well, yeah, I'm just going to go into it. The FBI, I think, knows what happened. I think this woman was sent there along with her husband and make it look like a vacation, but do some... Let's look. There's got a multi-million dollar home being built in the vicinity of where she was found dead. Okay? Um, You've got a multi-million dollar home. You've got a dead FBI photographer. You've got persons stating that they've seen dogmen in that area. Large ones. People are saying they've seen her taking photos of them. So... My thinking is the government or the FBI wanted to see what was going on. This rich person contacted whoever they knew and she was sent to investigate, take pictures and whatnot. 